Here's a little souvenir. Picture of my best pal, Sam Tucker, and his folks. Believe me, they don't come no better. Only when old Sam gets an idea in that hard head of his, ain't no room for nothing else. This is Nona, Sam's wife. And here's Sam's ma, a widow woman. Ma ain't so young, but her heart's still full of fire. Army here ain't no Tucker, just a good friend. If he looks kind of sheep-eyed, it's because he's all lit up with that flame in Ma's heart. These are the youngest of Tucker clan, Sam's kids, Daisy and Jotty. And here's Sam's granny. She didn't like having her picture took, neither. This one's me. I'm a town man myself. Only come home for fairs and weddings and such. That's how I come I cherish these pictures so. Makes me feel close to my friends to look at. some water. It's my darned old heart. Yeah. You just lie here, Uncle Pete. I'll finish your roll for you. Much obliged to you, Sam. I gotta take my cotton back now, honey. I'll take care of Uncle Pete. Sick, Clyde. I'm gonna finish his row. Okay. Where are you going after the crops over? I figured I might stay here. Get me a bulldozing job. Where are you going? Well, I think I'm going north next year. Oh. Go ahead and sit down. Hi, right, fella. Tired? Yeah.
wish we could raise him a tombstone. That's for folks that got money. Come here, Zuni. Don't you want any fox scrapes, Granny? I don't want to get mixed up with no copperheads. Already wearing one crooked toe, one of them scoundrels ruined. Mm. Mm -hmm. Don't be a hog, Daisy. Leave a few for the next fella. I thought you was a fair to snakes. I am. But that ain't no sign I got to starve to death, is it? You know that little San Pedro place down near the river? I heard of it. I ain't never seen it. Well, it belongs to the boss, too. Old Lodge at the commissary was telling me it's for rent. It's been laying out there now for three years. It should be as rich as mud. In the old days, old man Corinth used to raise the best crops in the country on it. If it's been laying out all that time, it'll take a whole year to clear it off. Yeah. <coughs> oh, Noni! Noni! Noni, come here and get this young billionaire spanker or I'll do it myself. Oh, no. You behave yourself, no. sis. Don't you be always teasing Granny. I reckon I could ask old man Hewitt for his mules. He don't ever hardly use them, no how. Pay him with a bit of the crop. And as for seeds and fertilizer, I bet I could make a deal with Harmy. And as for a plow, there's that old one of Paul's been laying out in Ma's backyard ever since he died. Ain't been used for nothing but roosting chickens on. I'm gonna ask the boss about it. Asking don't do no harm. No, asking no work either don't harm a man. After all, the boss is a pretty good guy. We all have been friends. Dottie, sis, Granny, come on. It's okay with me, Tucker. I ain't interested in that piece of land. It's too far away from my other property. But just remember this. If I ain't satisfied with the way you're working, I aim to break that contract any time I like. It's all right with me, boss. I like you, Tucker. You're a good hard worker, and that's why I'm bothering to warn you. And I'm telling you again, if you're working for a big outfit, Maybe you don't get rich, but you still get your pay, even if the crops is bad. But the little guy who's growing his own, if his crops is ruined, he's got nothing left. I don't know. See, you made up your mind. Got some way of moving your things? Yes, sir. Carrillo said I could borrow his truck. Okay. Good luck, Tucker. Thank you, sir. just right next to the river, honey. Oh, goody, goody. Go 
don't look like no house tall to me. <laughs> Looks more like a sow's nest. Well, I'd rather live back there in that dirty old camp than in a heap of junk like that. Ain't never gonna get me to go into that old sin hole. <laughs> Bringing their old granny to this scrubby place. Must be they don't love me no more than if I was a yellow dog. I always hoped we could have a room to ourselves someday. Oh, we can have. When summer comes, we'll let Granny and the kids sleep in here and move our bed out on the porch. And have everything real nice. Oh, Sam. The house don't seem like nothing extra. Seems like extra one thing. Pretty darn extra bad. I reckon I was thinking too hard about the land. I plum forgot about the house. It sure be some patching to do. More than a little. What about the well, Sam? Let's go look at it. I was crazy to think we could live in this place. Why did it take me at least two weeks to dig this well again? Without even talking about the money the planks and beams had cost. Tain't much of a man that brings his babies and his women folks to soak and freeze and no such sample as this. Maybe she's right. Water from that river for the kids would be just like serving them up a dish of typhoid. Tain't much of a man, I say. Look, honey, we can still go back to the camp if you want to. The boss couldn't have known how bad the place is. I could talk to him again and still maybe get my bulldozing job for the winter. Well, how's the ground? Oh, it's good earth, all right. You know, of dirt like this, a fella could raise the best crop in the country. It's been laying out all these years. But it's kind of like men, you know. It needs a rest every once in a while. Maybe that's the reason the Lord invented Sunday. But, Sam, how about all this brush and Johnson grass? You'll kill yourself getting rid of it for the planting. I ain't all alone, honey. I ain't like Uncle Pete. Every time I get plumb wore out, I think about you and Jotty and Daisy, and then I ain't quite so tired no more. Oh, Sam, I just never could get along without you. Me too, honey. I couldn't live without you. The thing that'd be good about it is we could always work together. When you did the plow and I could lead the mules, and, and, and when you cleared up this brush, I could burn it for you. And, and in the summertime, we could lie in the grass and watch the kids swimming in the river. Yeah, that'd be fun, honey. But what worries me is that busted well. Oh, Sam, we could surely borrow water from the neighbor yonder. Ain't nobody refuses water. Yeah, I hear he's got a good well. Sam. I reckon we ought to stay. You really mean that? You ain't just saying that to make me feel good. I'm saying it because I believe you're as good as any man, and it's right for you to be your own boss. Darling. Hey, you two. You ain't all alone here, you know. Hey there. We got a house. We're moving in, and it's all iron. Come on, you possum. Help me. Give me a hand. Here, you take the picture, sister. Mind you, don't drop it. Mama, the teddy bear! Come on, cutie, I'll help you down. No, you don't. I don't aim to go no... slew-footed... I can't even say it, being I'm a lady. All right, old lady, but you better be down before morning, or you'll go right back to camp with this truck. No man Carrillo might not like it so much, neither. Sam Tucker, my own grandson, gone crazy as a bed bug. Pure plum crazy, I tell you. Crazy as a bed bug? He's gone completely silly, that boy. Longer than a coot. Just plain out in his mind, I tell you. But he don't mind you ever done head. And if he thinks he's gonna stick his old granny in a trash box like that, but he's fitting for nothing more than kindling, he sure got another thing coming. Downright mean. You gotta take out their cussedness on filthy old folks. Well, I 
I done had no, my share, and I ain't taken no more know-how, I tell you, no more! It ain't exactly a veranda, honey, but to me, it's a porch that makes the house a home. Sam, I think I got the stove working. Oh, did you? We'll all light it together. You made a good job of that stove, honey. Won't be long before we'll have a good hot cup of coffee. You get some water, Sam. Johnny, Daisy, get the cups and put them on the table. Okay? You reckon Granny's gonna stay out there all night? Looks like that's gonna be took care of. <laughs> Sis, you go call Granny. No, sir. Nothing what comes out in that old pot don't keep me none tall. a good blanket. Now put it around you before you catch your death of cold. Here's some honey, Granny. Honey. <laughs> they not only let me die of the cold, but they hide out the goodies on me. It's nice and warm in here.
Anna, come on over here. Oh, that's a pretty one, Sam. Yeah, honey, that's a mighty fine fish. It'll make us a good dinner. Well, I figured I'd take this one to Devers, that neighbor ours down the road with a good well. That little one in the bucket's for us. Ain't you gonna put on dry clothes? Oh, I'll dry off walking over. Won't be gone long. You better keep Zuni here. This one ain't so big, honey. Come on, Jotty. Well, Zuni? I'll catch us another one tomorrow. A big one. We'll keep it. Run along with your mama, Jotty. place you got around here. You the owner, you Henry Devers? Nope. Folks call me Finley. Howdy. Howdy. He's my uncle. He's over yonder in the shed. Much obliged, Finley. Howdy. What do you want? I'm your neighbor. My name's Sam Tucker. I brought you a fish. You mean don't want to buy it? Oh, no, it's a present. Well, leave it if you got no use for it. Where'll I put it? Any place. On the bench. Say, that's a mighty queer-looking fish hook you're fixing. I ain't no grabbler. I fish hook and line. Aim to use it in this river? Aim to use it any place I feel like it. Finley! Take this here fish, give it to Becky to cook for dinner. You the new neighbor? I'm Becky Devers. Yes, I'm. We're the Tuckers. Been nice having folks next door. It's lonesome here. What are you doing here? I didn't send for you. But I thought Papa... You don't have to think. Get that fish and go back in the house. That fish is a real fine fish. And you get your washing finished. My wife will likely be over soon to borrow some of your well water. So that's what you come for? That's right. My well ain't no good. I could have told you that. Well, so can I. Now, what about that water? Why don't you get your water at the river? Because river water ain't no good for kids to drink. All right, as long as there's plenty of water. You'll have to make other arrangements, though, when summer comes, it gets pretty weak when the weather's dry. We'll take turns about replacing the wore-out rope. Seems pretty wore out already. Well, if you don't like it, next well's five miles down the road. Suits me. All right. So long, Devers. Uh, just a minute. You're likely going to fix your own well, ain't you? If you're renting, you must have some savings put aside. I got two good arms. It's worth more than savings. <laughs> Here folks talk, you think there can be farmers just like that with the bare hands. Got any tools, a tractor? No, I ain't got no tractor. But I got two mules and a good old plow, and a friend of mine's lending the seed. The rust and furnish is the fertilizer. Don't need much for good muddy land like that. And he gives the poison for the weevils, pays the cotton pickers, even lets you draw grub from his commissary after you get the ground broke. Yeah, he just furnishes about everything but the sweat. And if you get by the year, he generously lets you take your share of the crop. Ain't that right? Why well, ask me? Seems like you know it already. Oh, but I know Rustin. Ain't the first time he's getting a piece of land cleaned off for nothing. Until you get your plowing started, how do you aim to eat? I aim to fish and hunt varmints and sell a few skins. Now, lots of folks like that live around here, and plenty more done it before. And how about you? How'd you get started? Sharecropping. 
First year, I lost my whole crop. It was runt by the hail. Next year, Black Leg got my cow and pig that I'd spent all my savings for. My wife caught cold and she died. Two years later, one of my kids, the boy, he died from spring sickness. Maybe I lost them both, my woman and my kid, cause I didn't have no money for doctoring. And here I am with a farm. Good one, belongs all to me and worth lots of money. Only I can't forget what it cost me. So when I see young folk like you with their proudness, noses stuck in the air, it just makes me laugh. Well, much obliged for the water. And good luck with your fish hook. Hey, Finley. Huh? What's that big old fish hook your uncle's fixing up there? Is there a whale in this river? That's for lead pencil. Lead pencil? What's that? A catfish. He's got chin whiskers like lead pencils. Biggest during catfish you ever seen in the river. Finley! Get that water. Right away, Uncle Henry. Well, hurry up and quench your gas. Over again. Thank you, ma'am. be the wind. It's more the signs. For days now, the moon's been moving closer and closer to the North Star. The animals don't like that. They hide out. Crazy to go against the signs, but what can you do? You gotta get fresh food. Daisy, honey, why don't you and Sonny get into bed? It's nice and warm there. Come on, Daisy. Go to bed, Johnny. Nice day at school, sister. She didn't go, Sam. Why not? It's too cold. She ain't got no coat. She'll catch a death of cold. But Daisy's got to go to school. Just because we're having hard times right now don't mean we got to stop nothing. We got to keep going. Once we give up, we won't have the courage to get ourselves back to good times. And I see it ain't gonna have no dinner again tonight. Never you mind, Granny. For breakfast, we'll have a nice big bowl of cornmeal mush. When you all look down on my cold, dead face in that county pine box, you'll be sorry then, maybe. You keep on promising, Granny. You don't never deliver the goods. Hush your mouth. You can't talk to me like that. You ain't even a real tucker. Well, you ain't either. Hey, honey. Daisy's got to be coated. You've got to go to school. Don't you touch my blanket, Sam Tucker. Don't you touch my blanket. <laughs> Sam Tucker, if you touch one thread of my best blanket, you'll get punished for it. Granny, ain't you got no heart? You want Daisy to catch a death? There'll be enough blanket to keep you warm. I like a big cashew, Sam Tucker, my beach blanket, cashew. Granny. <laughs> that blanket. Sam Tucker's the boss here. He can cut up whatever he likes. He's the boss. You hear me? That blanket. <laughs> oh, Granny. <laughs> Don't take on so. <laughs> Look, 
I think I know where there's a nice swarm of wild bees. Maybe tomorrow I'll go out and get you some honey. Maybe. Wild bees. Wild bees don't care for folks coming and helping themselves, you know. Now, don't you worry. I'll get your honey. No need. You know, I guess you're right for your tucker after all. And, and that Sam of yours, he's most as good a man as my Fayette. <laughs> So that carcass of yours is sure gonna make four more tuckers mighty happy. Oh, no. Come on, Zoom. <laughs> yes, sir, your hat will just about bring the price of a pair of silk stockings for Nona. Nice and shiny. Now, folks. Easy, you'll all get your share. Hold on, everybody. There's gonna be a blessing. Much obliged, Lord. Looks like the Tuckers are gonna make the grade after all. Amen. Granny. Granny gets the first because she's the eldest. I've taken the Lord to be a stranger in this house. Then comes Jotty because he's the littlest. Then comes Papa because he caught the possum. And this one's for Zuni. Because he helped him. And last of all, Daisy and me, because we're the women folk. At school, they say, this kind of food's bad for you all the time. They say you gotta eat vegetables. Too much meat's bad. Vegetables in winter? If you don't. They say you get pellagra. That must be spring sickness, Sam. Well, it's vegetables that causes spring sickness. That's when you get it along about the time you start eating vegetables. I ought to know. I lost three of mine from it. Your Uncle Walter, Aunt Bet and Sue, and not one of them was over six. <laughs> oh, shucks, look at them. Anything a body likes as good as that couldn't be bad for him. Ain't that true, Nona? That's right, Sam. Thank you. 
Ourselves. Just kept working and plugging away, and by gosh, we done good. Before long now, we can start planting our cotton round about the twin days, and our crop will really get started. See those little green woolly worms falling out of that tree ten a minute? They're all drifting down together to the same place. And some folks might think that they're what lead pencil's after. But they'd be wrong. Because he's after something else. He ain't interested in no worms. Old Lead's a pretty smart old guy. Wouldn't hardly live to be as old as he is if he wasn't. I'll bet you old Lead waits for his dinner right over yonder with that there drift. It's like a trap from the river bottom. Is Lead Pencil older than Granny, Papa? Yes, he's older than Granny. Yes, sir? It must be yonder. Old Lead pencil got his cover. Give me that, honey. It's already lost three from it. Sam, I'm afraid. see no reason to bother you, doctor. It was just a little sore. Sonny ain't ever been sick. But it grew and grew. Now it seems like it's just plumb gonna possess him. You see it, doctor? It's like some evil crawling worm eating up our baby. I can't stand to watch it no longer, doctor. You gotta do something to stop it. a cow, do you? No, sir. 
Well, you better tell Sam to get one. How can we get a cow? Borrow one. Let Sam raise a heifer for somebody. Or borrow some milk anyway. A pint a day. Or better still, a quart. Any neighbor with a cow could spare you then. I'll try, doctor. What medicine? Undress the boy. What vegetables you been eating lately? Vegetables? Couldn't grow vegetables in winter. You got any money? Yes, doctor. I got your two dollars, and Sam's got a dollar and 35 cents more. <laughs> Keep it. You take all your money and spend it all for vegetables and get some lemons. Give him a glass of lemonade twice a day and get that milk, you hear? If you don't give him milk and vegetables, anything that I can do will be just plum wasted. And with the milk and vegetables? Mm, I think he's got a chance. Thank you. Call again. Me, I know a boy is. When we was right close to Shadow Theory, the old colonel, he brung us all together, and he said... He said, young men in civilian life never brag about your conquests, whether they be love Shut or Shut up, war. young fella. I'm telling you, I know. And I know I know. Hi, Miss Burke. Hey, how, 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 how are you? Well, if it ain't Sam Tucker. Oh, what, well, Tim, when did you get in town? How much for these here pipe cleaners? Ten cents, Sam. Ain't they gone up? It used to be a nickel. No, ma'am. Old Zeke could be mighty pleased with them, ma'am. Tim just came back to show off his city clothes. Look yeah, good. just take a look at that fancy tie. Seems like in the city, dollars grow faster than beans in the field. Don't pay no mind to them yokels. Sam, I've been looking all over for you. Let's go over to Siemens and I'll buy some beer and tell you all about it. Brother, I'm with you any time you'll buy me a beer. Well, Harmy, no ninjata over at Doc White's. When they come over, tell them I'll be back in a minute, will you? Yeah. I know what a minute means when you're drinking beer with old Timmy there. How much for this pair of garters? You said no ninjata's over to old Doc White? Yeah. What's wrong, Sam? Well, that jolly's ailing. Granny says it's spring sickness. That poor Nona. With a sick kid, she don't hardly get a wink of sleep. Yeah, it's tough, man. And my mom came out to my place yesterday to help. Harmony brought her out in his truck. Well, that's kind of a relief. Sam. Uh, Hello, Tim. Howdy, Howdy, Sam. Howdy. Hello, Sam. How's Nona? She's fine, thank you, man. Hey, would you be interested in coming work in the factory with me? Are you crazy? What would I do in the factory? I'm a farmer. Well, they just opened a new plant, and they're just crying for men. Don't even have to be skilled. I know the foreman. I'll get you in in a minute. Pay much? Seven bucks a day. Seven bucks a day? Howdy, gents. What'll it be? Ain't you new here? What'll it be? Okay, big shot. Two bottles of beer. Sure is hot in here. What about a beer for me? I'm mighty thirsty. Well, why don't you ask your sweet papa there? He gets it wholesale. Oh, him. This ain't one of his good days. Must have got out of bed on the wrong side. Well, I got out on the right side. Bartender, another beer. Hanson, ain't I seen you someplace before? No? What'd you say? I asked you, ain't I never seen you someplace before? Could be, I don't know. You in town all alone? Oh, no, ma'am. Well, like you see, I'm with my friend here, and my wife's waiting for me at Harmony's store. Oh, so you got a wife? Yep, I got a wife. Well, someone's got wives, and they're still nice and friendly. I'm sorry, ma'am, I was studying about something. Let's go down to the end of the bar, pal. We can't talk here. Excuse me, ma'am. I ain't got no wife waiting for me, baby. How about a date tonight? You big pig. You know what you can do with your dates. Okay, okay, baby. We'll talk about it later. Here you go. Here you kid, Sam. Seven bucks a day, huh? So it's yes, you come? Oh, don't rightly see how I can, Tim. I made a deal with Rustin. I already got some credit from his commissary. Man, with well, seven bucks a day, it wouldn't take you long to pay him back. Yeah, but I'm telling you, Tim, this is the first time I've been able to farm my own crop, just like I always wanted to. 
That ain't something I can give up just like that. Well, how much can you get on your crop? Man, without that ground I got, it'll be the finest crop in the country. Well, what does that mean, the finest crop in the country? Then it like at all, I can make two bales an acre. Well, how much does that make for you? More than 50 bales. No, no, I mean how much money. Do you know that on that ground that I've been working on now, old man Corinth made a fortune in the last cotton boom, a real fortune? Oh, so that's the idea. All you farmers is just the same. Gamblers. That's what you all are, to a man. Year after year, you starve yourself to death in hopes that some fine day... Well, I think you're loco. Me, I'd rather be safe first. Me, I'd rather work in my fields. I feel better that way. I feel more... more free. Free? Free? Man, with money in your pocket, you're as free as the wind. With this, you want a good meal, you go to a restaurant. Good room, you go to a hotel. All you gotta do is flash your greenbacks. You get anything you want. You call that free, sweating from morning till night in the baking hot sun, working in them fields? Oh, I allow us how it's sometimes pretty hard. But what I mean is being able to decide things for myself. I know I can choose my own time about planting and plowing and harvesting my crop. And that I can do it all in my own way and don't have to answer to nobody. I mean, for me alone to be accountable for it, whether the weevils strip it clean or whether it's the best crop in the country. And all that baloney, that means no. Afraid so, Tim. Well, pal, I think you're making a big mistake. Hey, boss, have to work my other four dollars. What four dollars? I'll give you a five dollar bill. Oh, no. Lizzie, you seen that was a one? Of course I did. And that pretty boy that's going home to his wife, he sees it too. Well, I'll be doggone. So that's how it is. Nothing but a hickey old farmer, and yet the girls fall for you like a ton of bricks. What in the heck have you got that I can't buy with my dough? <laughs> <laughs> Give me my four dollars, you big double-jointed son of a skunk. I'll tear this joint hey, outside. Okay, brother. But I hope it's going to be worth the four dollars to you. What are you aiming to do, Tim? I ain't asking you to help, Sam. You got a family. I wouldn't start no trouble, Sam. Now, don't stay here, Sam. This is apt to cost you more than four dollars. I'm asking you, please, not to stay here. man done said about little John. Just like to see him get them vegetables to grow. Where'd you figure we were going to get that there milk from? Out in the sky, just like that.
Big Sam ain't the only pink-headed one around here. That mall of his. <laughs> Think she can cure the spring sickness with fresh air. <laughs> a widow lady her age ought to have better sense. Me? I say that baby will just kick his death in this year wind. I'm gonna get that milk. Poor Sam. Males in this here Tucker family just ain't strong. No, sir. It's just like I told you, Tucker. I don't need no extra help. Well, I got Finley and my gal Becky. Too bad about your boy. Uh, I know what that is, a sick kid, pretty sorrowful. Put some in, Becky. But I told you before, it's wrong for a man to get too big for his britches. When you got no money, you work for them what's got it. That there's the rule. Why don't you go back to Ruston? Get your six bits a day, some milk for your chap, maybe some doctrine even. About the milk, like you see, I can't rightly spare a drop. Me, I got no milk for myself. It's all for the pigs. Throw the rest in, Becky. Finley, bring the grain. Your cotton. Coming along, not too many bugs. I seen you the other day in the field. You were shaving that cotton so close to the ground with the plow, you scared me. Still, that's the best way to get rid of the bugs. Rolls them right out in the sun. The heat kills them better than any poison. But you gotta have a good eye and a steady hand. You're a good worker, all right, Tucker. If I was you, I wouldn't think twice. I'd go back to work for Rustin. If I wanted to give up, I wouldn't have to go back to Rustin. Got something better? Yeah, a lot's better. Like I already done told you, I want to grow my own crop and I aim to do it. Well, if you're so sure of yourself, why are you always coming around asking the neighbors for help? I don't know why I ever asked you for anything. Likely some old-fashioned idea I had about neighborliness. Well, take good care of them pigs. That's sure what I'm going to do. Finley, see that that black hog eats all his dinner, you hear? Go on, Devers. Sam! Sam! Here, take it. It's for job. Thanks, Becky. I can get you some more every once in a while. My daddy won't never see you. I'm much obliged, Becky, and I'll take it, because my boy's really bad off. But I'll pay you for it. Becky! Becky, I've seen you. I've seen what you've done. I feel just like breaking somebody's neck today. I'm going to tell your pa you were stealing his milk. I know you was hankering after this fella. I've seen you looking at him before. I'm going to tell your pa! Oh, what did you do that for? I ain't never going to speak to you again. If I see you talking to him again, you'll be sorry. Get Finley. Don't fret, Becky. You're a good gal, and thanks just the same. Honey? Nona. Nona. Oh, Nona, honey, Nona. I can't listen to him cry no more. <laughs> Oh, Lord.
Lord, how come you put that sky up there and this old mud down here? Made it so purty if you didn't want us to work it and to love it. You want me to give all this up? Move in town with Tim and work with him in a factory under a roof that hides your sky and puts out your light? Tell me, Lord, help me to know. Hi, lady, did you have a good trip? Oh, she had a fine trip. She's a wonderful old cow. You have a good trip to me? Yeah, you know, Harmony, a cow's the only thing I love in the country that I miss in the city. Believe me, you, me, that sweet old gal is a lot more gentler than that Lizzie at the saloon. Oh. Honey, can I go town now? Sure, of course you can. That's Harmony. Lizzie's come wagging in one of these days with a boa constrictor. I wouldn't be one mite surprised. I'm going to call her, um, Uncle Walter. Vegetable garden. That's Finley and them's Devers cattle. Jotty. You go on back in the house, honey. Go on back in the house. Finley, what do you know about this? I don't know nothing. I didn't do it. No, not by yourself, but we both know who did. Come on, we're going to your place. <laughs> Devers, look, I said, why'd you do it? What do you mean, why'd I do it? You can't prove nothing. Law will call it an act of God. As for your garden, you can plant it again, can't you? Plant it again? Or did you come to borrow some seed? I wouldn't borrow from Wait you. Wait a minute. Speaking of borrowing. 
This rope's plumb ruined. Remember what we agreed on when you first come and asked for water? You mean about replacing it? Yeah, about one. replacing it. It's time for you to do it now. I don't aim to use this one no more. And I'm sick and tired of you coming around here and asking for water. And now, Devers, I'm gonna break your neck. I'm mighty glad you started this, Tucker. Especially with Finley here as a witness. That makes two of us can talk to the law. You'd like to see me leave her, wouldn't you? Yeah, of course I would. What'd I ever do to you? Like I told you, first time you come to ask for water. Just don't like to see folks trying to be better than they are. In this world, there's got to be them what gives orders and them what takes them. And you figure you was made to give them and me to take them, is that right? Why? Because I worked hard all my life. I worked hard too, you know that. Well, why here, not someplace else? Before you come, I was alone in this place. Everything was mine. I was figuring on buying your farm. It was cheaper then. But now, if this goes on like this, everything's going to be yawn. All I ever see is you everywhere I go. In the woods, killing the varmint at the river, catching the fish. Even Finley told me you, you set a line for lead pencil. And my gal Becky, you heard what she said. Sam! Sam! <laughs> Sam, you, you better take care of that cut. Go on back in the house, Becky. It does not bother about me anymore. Well, I get my gun. Lead pencil. You can 
grab hold of this line here for a second. Finley, you was right. His whiskers is as big as lead pencils. Tucker, that's my fish. So you own the river too, huh? Well, maybe the law will call my hook and line an act of God. You give me the fish and swear never to say you caught it, and I'll give you a dollar. I don't want no dollar. My folks likes fish. Well, all right, let me take it and keep it for a day or two and show it at the store, and then you can have it back. Folks likes fresh fish, Devin. Well, let me take it and you can use out of my garden. Well, you can have the whole garden. Well, Rope, how are we gonna draw water? Oh, I got another rope in the barn. What happened, Sam? Becky told Hello, me... Oh, honey, it ain't nothing. I was just helping Devers here pull this big old catfish out in the river. He done caught lead pencil. Tell you. Uh, yeah, we plumb forgot. <laughs> <laughs> you tell him, Harvey. Well, uh, we're gonna get married Sunday. <laughs> I'm just thinking how blessed us Tuckers is. I can't help wondering why. I get the man I want. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are all together. Charlie's cured and happy once more. Daisy's so good at her book learning, she's going to get a prize at school. Sam's grow the best crop in the county. Maybe even going to buy his own place with what he makes off of it. Yep. I keep studying why Almighty blessed us Tucker is so generous. But I reckon I know. It's because of Sam and the way he worked that farm of his, that crop he done growed. Must be just the way the Lord wanted him to. You're sure right. Only if Sammy's like he is, it's because he's got such a good ma. Yeah, I got something to say, too. I can't think of nobody I'd rather have than harm for my pa. <laughs> hey, son, he ain't a baby no more. Leave your ma alone. She's mine now. Oh, oh. she's yours, is she? Who do you think you are, isn't <laughs> you, is she? She's not mine. Mm, let me kiss the groom. Mm. <laughs> these kids don't know anything. They ain't had our experience. <laughs> hey, Harvey, uh, now that you're married, I suppose you'll be going on the wagon, huh? I was just thinking I'd start that tomorrow. Oh. But it ain't tomorrow yet. <laughs> come on in here. He says it does. Say, Sam, come on. Come on, everybody. What's it with Jim? Okay, boss. Come on, man. Don't worry about me. I'm going to get rich. When our ship comes in, I want us to get one of them talking machines. <laughs> a lot of sacred records. And I want to sit on the gallery and I want to drink lemonade with ice in it and hear Beulah Land, you know. Sweet Beulah Land, sweet Beulah Land, dance on the highest mountain stand. I look away. Good. Uh, say, Army, uh, you're sure you didn't catch cold the night you made that, huh? Don't you know this is just stuff to keep you warm? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Army, weren't you feared of the law? You kidding? The law was right there, waiting for the finished product. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sam, <clears throat> come on, I, I want to show you something. Rye whiskey, rye whiskey, rye whiskey, I cry. If a tree don't that fall kills that. Don't me, worry, I've got a sister. Real city stuff, Sam. Same as they're drinking them hot shot nightclubs. Lay your nose on that. Smell it, Sam. Smell it. Ain't that something? Oh, it sure is. Three bucks a quart. Got a square dance now, folks. Oh, I gotta find a good hiding place for this. Oh, there you are, Sam. Come on, honey, you dance with me. Oh, you're very nice, ma'am, but thanks just the same. After the dance, we could go outside, honey. I got some money found drinking liquor in my car. Well, thank you, ma'am, but I got a partner. 
How about dancing with me, honey child? And after the dance, we'll go out to your car. Well, I don't know about that. Oh, come on now, don't be that. It's raining. What's going to happen to our cotton? Sure is a bad time for rain to come. Well, better get it along back inside. Don't do no good for us to get wet.
wake up. We've got to go home. gonna stay here a minute longer. Not even a decent place to sit. I'm gonna take this old carcass direct to the cemetery and wait my maker. <laughs> I never thought you'd treat your old granny like this. Sam, tell me you're a criminal. A mean, mean criminal. You stay here. Time like this, folks gotta stick together. You stay here with the rest of us. Hey, Sam. Boy, it's good and ruined, Tim. Well, gotta go find Uncle Walter. All right. I'll stay because you're trapping me like you always do. You're strong and you got that switch. What can an old crepit granny do against the likes of you? Come on, back to the house. We got work to do. Where do you reckon she might be? There ain't no telling. But I just gotta find her, Tim. Pasture down there by the river's all underwater. Sure hope she ain't in that river. There ain't no cow worth getting drowned for. Her. I ain't asking you to help, Tim. Okay, I'll go with you. There she is. I'm gonna swim over and get her. Well, why don't you wait till the water goes down? Well, this river will never stop rising. Okay, boy, I'll give you a hand.
Okay, Tim. Okay, boy. Okay, I'm swimming on along. No, I ain't. I'm going on with you. You better stay here. Yeah? Okay, bro. I'm coming to town with you, Tim. I gather up my measly belongings that's left and pack up my whole bunch and get out. All them fields and the trees and the river, I just can't look at them no more. I give them everything I had to give honest, and what'd they give me back? Nothing. Nothing but trouble and misery. It'd be crazy to stick any longer. A fellow ought to know when he's beat. When he ain't wanted on the place, ain't nothing for him to do but to pack up and get out. Come on, let's go. <laughs> is still standing. Sam, your gun is safe. And lots of other things, too. Most of Jotty's vegetable jars are still whole. Of course, the pictures got kind of broke, but once I get them hanging straight on the wall, they won't look so bad. Of course, the worst thing of all was the stovepipe. But I got it back up again, and I think it'll work all right now. How do you like that, Sam? I like it fine, honey. Hey, Sam Tucker, you know what this reminds me of? <laughs> reminds me of 43 years ago with your grandpappy, Fayette. Same thing happened to us, only worse, much worse. Our roof come clean to the floor, and our walls was plumb caved in. And for a week, we crawled in and out on our hands and knees like prairie dogs out in their holes. Oh, my thing. Oh. But, oh, Fayette, he say, never mind, sugar. It could have been much worse if the engine had taken us. You said you was coming to town with me. Yeah. Yeah, I said it. You said it, but you ain't coming now, huh? I was a plumb wore out for a while. I didn't seem to believe in nothing no more. But now my clothes are starting to dry. I'm beginning to believe again. I guess that's the way the earth feels when she's wet. But the sun will start drying her out, and she'll start calling to me again, just the way Nona does sometimes. I know that all along you'd never leave this place. If there was only one farmer left in this earth, that'd be you. 
Quit your kidding, Tim. Now, their machines are yours, and they're fine. I realize that, but you sure can't eat them. Once in a while, you gotta have a hunk of beef and a few ears of corn to fill up your belly. Oh, you city folks are mighty smart. But I'm afraid without us farmers, you'd get kind of skinny. And without us workers, I just wonder what had happened to you all. Your plow, she sure didn't grow on no tree. And your gun that you feed your bunch with in the winter. You didn't plant no seeds to get that. Someday, like I hope, you get you a tractor. Where you reckon that'll come from? Believe me, friend, it takes all kind to make up this whole world. You love your farm. It's right you stay. I like to work in a factory. And that's why I come here to take you back with me, Sam. Well, you know what I'm talking about. I don't mean no harm. I'd just like to help you. Yeah, I know, Tim. Thanks. Coffee's all ready. as if we'd ever get through with the plowing. I'm going back to the house and just sit and wait for my call to glory. Yeah, spring's gonna come a little early this year, honey. Yeah, I reckon we can start our seeding even before the twin days. <laughs> 